So the specific objective for the White Bay Power Station is to think about it as, I guess, the centroid of a knowledge-intensive usage for the bays that will drive that overarching ambition of creating a knowledge-intensive um, cluster for the bays precinct itself. When you look at the map here, you can see that the White Bay Power Station occupies approximately 20% of a 10.5 hectare site. So critically, this area that we're talking about is the power station building itself and the surrounding area, which is sizable. So the way in which we're going to think about the White Bay Power Station is that we need to recognise its history. We need to recognise its heritage and we need to think about it, any sort of concepts for it, in an authentic way of preserving what it was. It was built in 1913 or thereabouts, uh, operated for around about 70 years and during that time it supplied a lot of Sydney's power for trams and trains. It has an amazing switch room that you might see on some of the uh, images that uh, preceded this slideshow where you've actually got little buttons that relate to turning on and off Bankstown line. So it controlled a lot of Sydney's train network. And it's also got some amazing examples of pressed metal ceilings, spaces that are compressed, spaces that release. So when you walk through it, it's got, um, it's got an amazing feeling. But a lot of it is currently um, highly contaminated, highly dangerous, and it's inactive. As you can see here, uh, it was also subject to intensive water damage and has recently had a new roof put on it just to keep it from falling in on itself. And it requires a significant amount of work. What this image also shows you is the scale of the surrounding area, which, which includes that magnificent promenade down through to the water. And if you stand in that place, you get an amazing vista back to the city. Here you can see the location of the White Bay Power Station in relation to the broader Bay's precinct. You can see it actually bookends the Bay's precinct and needs to act as the gravitational pull for people to move from the city to a new creation of a cluster near that western end of the Bay's precinct. If the Bay's precinct is to work well, this has to be a destination that, that's, that is a real magnet for activity, jobs and public space and leisure. This is an example of the current status of the White Bay Power Station. You can see what 30 years of, of, of vacancy has done to the building. Um, there are significant areas of water damage. Um, it's relatively unsafe, but it also has a great opportunity for heritage adaptation and restoration. So what are the possibilities? The possibilities here is to drive something that can genuinely contribute to um, new knowledge intensive jobs for future generations that can position Australia for growth and position Australia to retain our talent and export our talent into the global market. If we're going to transition from a mining economy to an economy that shows great opportunities, what an amazing lightning rod to do that in such an iconic precinct such as the Bays. And if there's ever an idea or ever a, ever a precinct that warrants some great ideas, it's certainly the White Bay Power Station. So I draw all of your attention now to this booklet that you would have seen handed out, which is our call for great ideas. This is commencing next week. And what this is about is a genuine opportunity for the community, for academia, for industry, for all, everyone, every stakeholder, which includes all Sydney siders, to have their say as to what possible thoughts and imagination we could put into defining some big ideas for this um, icon of, uh, of our industrial heritage. So what does urban growth think? We think that this has such huge possibilities because it's 10 and a half hectares, of which 20% is the building itself. Uh, it has great possibilities for both public space, for great um, employment generation, and also for sympathetic housing. So we think that this area could accommodate, in fact, all three different uses, but recognising that the predominant driver here is about how do we create a new cluster of knowledge-intensive jobs and how do we make it a magnet to actually pull people through to the western side of the bays. 
but you can also imagine what an active and vibrant place this could be if you could activate that public forecourt that connects down to the water. We opened it up during discovery day and gave people an opportunity to actually walk that space. Uh, and until you actually go in there, you don't get a sense for just how amazing uh, that space is in front of the power station through to the water. So there's some great um, possibilities that we could explore there to make this place really hum. It'll also be critically important that we make sure that this power station is connected with the broader promenade and that it acts as a link through to Balmain and a link back through to Piedmont. And there's been some great ideas around reimagining what the Glebe Island Bridge could possibly do to further enhance the transport connections. And I encourage everyone here, if you've got some good thoughts in relation to that particular piece of infrastructure, we'd welcome the thinking in relation to that too. And finally here, what we're trying to create is ultimately places for people. This needs to be set up for another 100 years, 200 years or longer of activity. It needs to be grown to be a place that people love and it needs to be something that can contribute to those five objectives of the Bayes Precinct. So that's all it is for me to sort of kickstart some thinking, kickstart some discussion. I'd now welcome you to uh, move to the talking tables behind me, behind this sign, or alternatively to post your opinions and tell us what you think on the boards up there. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day.